Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the fourth episode of Josh Kosei no Mudazukai. And last episode, it was a lolly focused episode. We got to find out about her and her grandmother and their circumstances and just get to see Lolly do her best to do basic, you know, things. So yeah, I wonder how they'll manage to top that episode. I hope they do. So let's get into it and see if and how they do. Three, two, one, play. We're continuing this pattern, aren't we? I don't believe you, but shoot. Okay. I mean, I've kind of heard that before. Okay, sounds amazing so far. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the music. Is it going to hit the bug or... Just attack that poor man with a coin. I, I mean, you can make it look amazing with music and slow motion and stuff, but still not all that exciting. Okay. I guess it's a little bit amazing. Just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, we made our own miracle happen. Take that. So you made the miracle happen by going to the convenience store and throwing a coin at him. That was your contribution to the miracle. Hey, I still love the opening. There's still more characters to learn more about, so hopefully we do. And then this part. Moon does cry. Yeah, I mean... Very solid explanatory. Just in that tree. Damn, we're back into it. Majima, so she's gonna get some focus, cool. <laughs> it does seem unbalanced. There's Majime. We call her Majime, so give her the times. Wow. Oh, God. Are, are you okay? Okay. I wasn't really expecting this, but I'll take it. I will take it. I 
I hope I would I wish you well. Good luck. Do your best. <laughs> yeah, I mean it wasn't much of a reaction, but I guess it was something. <laughs> uh, even though she's a robo. Mathematical factor. Uh, it's definitely Majime. The weird things they talk about. What is with these voices? Okay, Lolly, do your best, whatever you're trying here. <laughs> yes, not to be confused with Pokey. <laughs> Take. Oh, it's so cute. He just wants to be friends. It's great. Uh, even for Baka. Come on. That's not cool. Uh, that was not one at all. Look at you dead. You made her cry. What does that make you? Yeah, you don't bully Lolly, it's not okay. That's not gonna solve anything. <laughs> Lolly jump. I, I mean, I don't know, JK bending over backwards, that's a good way to apologize to most people, but probably doesn't apply to Lolly. Wow. Okay. Uh, is there a point here? You're losing me, Sensei. I... <sighs> sure. You don't mind. Wow. Uh. <laughs> uh. Just take the the month of of whatever. So we are going full stalker. <laughs> uh, Baka is just so... I mean, if you want thick meat, just just order it. Uh, I can see that, but not not quite as erotic as I would have expected. Okay, that's a good question. Does she? Does she have a good trait? Any redeeming quality? Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, not exactly restaurant conversation. What'd you... Uh, are we gonna reevaluate our friendship with her now? I think you just murdered your friend. I hope you're happy. Flashback? Middle school. That's definitely a middle school uniform. <laughs> Some serious blushing. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the focus of the scene. Hope you gave her CPR at least. But is Baka okay? That's the real question. I guess that is her one redeeming quality. Is that she's not boring. Okay. How do you slide like that? You ask for a lot, you know. Was it? Yeah, just just study. Considering they have two polar opposite personalities, this is interesting to see. Do you just scribble on your papers? What is wrong with you, Baka? Uh, don't think that would be feasible. <laughs> yeah, just just go away. That's all we ask. I get it. I get it. Anyway, back to Robo, the important thing. Really? Uh... I don't think that was going to do anything. But you tried. <laughs> yeah, it could have gotten better. Yeah, that's the that's the thing we need to do now now. Baka ruining everything. <sighs> Majime, hope she's not sick with those 10,000 things she had before. Yeah, and you don't want people to think you're that. Wow. <laughs> uh, don't worry, your mother. <laughs> yeah, that's a good excuse. Or a week or five, you know.
Is she absent or just late? <laughs> it does seem like that. Is that her? What is it now? Oh. <laughs> That's not remotely convincing. Yeah, you're just full of it. It's not even doesn't even match your skin tone. You can still see hair in the back. <laughs> yeah. I guess I asked the question, Majime does Majime need take notes? <laughs> there we go, crisis averted. But you could use an umbrella. Are we going to possibly share one here? Oh no, no, it's getting harder. So, what are we talking about though? He tank you destiny is out of the question if it's raining, so. Now, what do typical girls talk about? Just say what cup size you're rocking. That always works from what I've seen. Wait, no, don't leave. <clears throat> I mean, you have an umbrella, just offer it to share it with her. <laughs> well, yeah, but Rain and Ramen have nothing really in common. And now you're attending having a conversation, so. There we go. I knew you would could bring that up. We're supposed to share it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it just looks so weird. I <laughs> You do look like you gone crazy. You could have just shared the umbrella, but and she left an impression <laughs> yeah she left an impression all right and definitely got sick yeah there's not a lot of good decisions made this episode uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hero landed. Now we can see her in the tree to, to attempt that. <laughs> How long have you, been, have you been up there? Just be careful not to break a bone. So is she gonna catch you as you fall? Because it wouldn't be exactly like the one bit of the ED, but it'd be close. No, 12,000! That's usually how it goes. <laughs> Just listen out the kanji.
That doesn't make a lot of sense, but... Uh, yeah, my. I wanted you to help me out of the tree. If I fought out of this tree, I'll be the blue bone tree. Oh, she got out that tree pretty quick. Okay, here we go. Here's the princess carrying I was waiting for. Ooh, and she even did the landing while carrying someone. That, yeah, <laughs> just like in my favorite anime. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Make up your mind. Please get your story consistent. Oh yeah, now we know why she Princess Curious are in the ED. Just your familiar is following you. I almost said Sky Mother. Still don't get the pig though. I want an explanation on the pig. Cause I don't remember that from before, so And you got Majime in her notes there. And see you can see it back on the building that Majime is, is Princess Carrie and Yamai. I want more of the girl with the, like, pink sweater tied around her waist, because she looks so... I like her standing pose that she has in the ED. So I kind of want to get more of her because of that. Because, you know, that's a great reason. And Stinger. How do you do that? Yes, you do. What are you talking about? School will be too boring without it. <laughs> well, that seems educational. Why would that be a problem? You don't want to blow up the school. <laughs> like, you can have them back. <laughs> uh, I saw that coming, but I don't think she's taking them back. Anyway, that was the... Uh, fourth episode of Josh Kosei no Murazukai. Maybe I should have actually looked at the credits to see who voices who, but oh well. Anyway, this episode, uh, the episode was called Majime, and as you'd expect, it focused on Majime. So, something I wasn't expecting, is, but apparently she seems to have a thing for a robo. So, that's certainly uh, something that I'm glad to now know about. And of course, the episode started as usual with stupid Baka talking about something amazing that she discovered or whatever but it's never all that great although i guess it was a little bit interesting just just a bit still a kind of a miracle is a bit of a stretch but i guess if it evolves as the great buddha i guess you could call it one but anyway yeah majime definitely has her eye on eye on robo and lolly her focus episode was last episode but she still had at least one scene of relevance this episode and it was giving her friends pokey because she wants to get closer with them i I guess. And, you know, of course it went pretty smoothly with Robo and Ota, but not so much with Baka because she just ruins everything. As we've established, her only redeeming fact, uh, redeeming traits, yeah, I think that's what you call it. 
But uh, at least that she is not boring. Like, she's entertaining. She's amusing. That's pretty much all she's got going for her. He makes Lolly's cry, which is not okay. And Baka's big problem is, well, her grades aren't great, so... Kind of, teacher kind of gave her an ultimatum there. Either supplementary lessons for a month, or baldness. Buzz cut. But, yeah, now that those are great. Went to a family restaurant to study. However, Baka was more interested in stopping Ota from studying than actually studying herself. Rather than trying to raise herself up to her level, she'd rather bring someone else down, and that's very, uh, very consistent with her character, you know. Also talks about poop a lot, which is fitting, because that's what she is. Burn! Just, just kidding. Tries to poison her friend. <laughs> Almost kills her. But we did get to see them in their middle school uniforms, which is great. But yeah, Majime was just full-on stalker this whole episode. Apparently trying to learn the secrets of Baka and why it resonates with Robo the way it does. Because, you know, she was able to get Robo to actually do a bit of a chuckle or whatever. Break her usual composed look. All that, her poker face. And yeah, at that point, Majima decided there was value in her character. <laughs> Wrote a bunch of notes. Had her notes taken by Baka, who then, she was worried, Oh my god, she's going to see my notes and think I'm like I'm obsessed with her or something. But luckily, it didn't quite get to that point. Because her notes are a little bit too much for her. But yeah, Majin Man was definitely had a rough episode. But anyway. Uh... Okay, I want to check real quick because it did sound like it. Yeah, Majin Man is voiced by Takahashi Ri. I wanted to confirm that before I said something. But yeah, I could just imagine her saying explosion at a few parts. So I'm glad I wasn't going crazy. I did, did correctly hear that. So that's, so that's good. No wonder I enjoyed listening to her talk so much. But yeah, she was getting pretty crazy this episode, kind of losing it. But her trying to emulate Baka was funny. Like, she said that stupid fried chicken line or whatever to Robo, but didn't quite connect the way she wanted to, unfortunately. Got really sick. Oh yeah, she talked about when she took an entrance exam or whatever, how sick she got. Like, she had everything. Like, it's a surprise she didn't die, considering how sick she was back then. So that was interesting to, to find out. And Baka with the brilliant idea of going to class with a bald cap. So she'd be like, yeah, I'm way ahead of you since they already got rid of my hair completely so you can't do, you can't shave my hair because there's no hair to shave. Joke's on you, Sensei. But then, yeah, it didn't, didn't actually work because Sensei's not as stupid as she is. But it was just so unconvincing. And then we had, well, I don't know if it wasn't really the final scene, but we had our scene between Majime and Robo where they actually do get to talk a decent amount. It was raining, Majima was trying to try strike up a conversation, but usually when you try to force that sort of thing, you're not, you're not you're ever going to get anything too natural to come out when you're actually standing there thinking, okay, I'm with this person, I kind of want to talk to them. What do I say? You know, because even if you come up with something, it's usually not going to flow very well afterwards because there was something forced, you know, not something you had any kind of genuine impulse urge to, to talk about. But... Uh, but uh, uh, what actually did strike up the conversation, though, was Robo leaving. Because she has a rule to only wait there for three minutes because it's the rule for ramen. Because that just makes perfect sense in her head, I guess. But yeah, basically with the conversation about the rain at that point. And, okay, here's the thing. Majime had an umbrella. I, I was almost sure this is where this was going, was she would be like, Hey, Robo, I got an umbrella. Want to share it? Like, we could scooch up close to each other, maybe link arms so neither of us get wet. And uh, then just uh, walk home. Like, why couldn't you just do that? Like, I don't... I don't know. That's what I would have done, but apparently she didn't opt to do that. Apparently the more logical thing in her head was to give her the umbrella and walk home in the rain herself. And to then pour water on herself to really drive home the point that she likes to get wet while wearing clothes. I just, that was just so weird. Like, I can hardly believe a character named Majime did all that. Like, I can hardly believe what I was seeing as I watched it. But yeah, during that part especially, I could hear Megumin coming out of her when she was doing that running around the rain thing. Like, I pretty much had Megumin in my third eye vision as I listened to that, so. And then just the mother of her just so worried about her. Just like, what's wrong with my daughter? Uh. 
And then we had another really fun scene with, but this one was with the MI. So she looked like she got some screen time. She was in a tree, kind of like a cat. So, yeah, the mental image of her dropping from the sky wearing that amazing outfit and doing the superhero landing, that was really cool. She didn't do it in real life, though. So, yeah, I want to double check that. But, she, this, this, yeah, the reason she climbed the tree was specifically to do that. But she just chickened out, which makes sense. Like, usually you would probably hurt yourself if you did that. Like, you could probably do it and without getting too hurt. Like, if you really know what you're doing and are prepared and are athletic and experienced enough, you could probably do it in a way to, mid to have very minimal injury. Like, maybe there's a little bit of a ah, da, 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 but at most, but I don't think Yamai could do it like that. It is fairly high up. Wait, she, she was in there for four hours? I think I missed it the first time. Yeah, four hours. Just no wonder she had to go to the bathroom. It would have been funny, though, if she sat up there and then peed and then it landed on someone's head that walked by and that's how Majima discovered her. That would be funny, but no, the show didn't quite go that far. The show might be a little bit vulgar, and, but not, I guess not quite willing to go that far. Just the friggin' bird makes a nest out of her. But yeah, luckily for her, Majima walked by and Majima is more than willing to help out. Oh yeah, this is when she tried to give some stupid chuny story about why she's up there, like on Lookout. And talk about how she's revealing her secrets. And her story was just so inconsistent. Like, just going from organization to city to country. Like, this kept scaling up. But. And didn't even. Cons and also, the number went somehow from 5 to 14. I'm still not sure how you can get that wrong in your guess. But you gotta like how she tries, though, right? You gotta at least appreciate that much. And then as she thinks of a name for it, she looks at the near, the, some building. See, what was it? Aoki Osteopathetic, Osteopath, Osteopathetic, the clinic, clinic. And, and she couldn't just obviously read the name of the place, so she just used the kanji, which was just blue tree bones. Is that the kanji for bones? I don't know. I don't, rec I don't really recognize the third kanji. So maybe she skipped her first... Yeah, I think the... There's five kanji there. I think the fourth one might be Bones, now that I think about it. So she might have just skipped that one. But anyway, the point is, it was a silly name. Like, Blue Tree Bones, what does that even mean? Like... Like, uh, is a tree... Like, an artificial tree made out of blue bones? I don't quite get that. Or a blue tree that was destroyed and now it's scattered like bones? I don't... I just, it's just a stupid name. <laughs> it's kind of my point. It's an illogical name that doesn't make sense. And it bothers me a little bit. It's kind of my the point I was getting at with that overly long build up to it. But anyway, Magic Man got up the tree pretty easily and just grabbed her, you know, Princess carried her and jumped on down and did the superhero landing while carrying her. So yeah, I'm pretty sure you might fell in love probably right then and there. Like you saw a pretty good blush there, so I think that's safe to say. But yeah, the real takeaway from this episode is that Magic Man is really cool. Really serious, but can be silly when she needs to be, or when things have just gotten a little bit too rough for her. But yeah, Imagine Man, pretty interesting character, more so than you would think, usually, with that sort of serious type character. But regardless, uh, pretty good episode for the most part, I would say. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snokey for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.